Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Bombshell Sportswear site critique where I'm showing you a site that has taken a lot of money out of my pocket with because of my wife shopping at this store so much. They have great products and they're actually doing a lot of things right. So I've been pointing out in the part one video, I pointed out a lot of stuff on the home page and on the collection page of things that they were doing right and some of the things that they were doing wrong. I'm gonna pick up right where we left off and jump back into the site and take you through the rest of the site and show you what else they're doing right, things that you can mimic in your store and things that you will want to avoid doing in your store as well. So let's go ahead and hop back over. Okay, so here's where we left off on part one. We talked about the collection page. If you didn't see that, make sure you go watch the collection page. The, the link to the video one, part one, will be in the description below where we talk about the collection page and the home page and some of the other site stuff. But from here, we're gonna click right into a product and look at some thigh high Heather leggings, which again, like I mentioned in the previous video, these are some of my favorite ones that my wife has. They're awesome, they're very sexy, and I love how she looks at them. I don't love how much she spends at Bombshell though, because she's always shopping on this site, which means they're doing something right, which is why I came to look at it. And what I'm gonna show you here is some more stuff that they are doing very, very right, with a few things that they could improve upon, okay? So here we go. The product page layout, okay? Let's just scroll the page real quick. Okay, we're gonna go down to the reviews and then they've got Insta and the bottom and the footer. Okay, so we saw the page, now let's go back up. Okay, so a couple things. First thing is, they've got a pretty nice layout, okay? I'm not, and I'm not gonna say it's the best layout because I haven't seen the data, I haven't tested it, but what I would test this against is a prototypical layout with one image with three slider images, so there'd be four images total like there is, but only one would be showing and they could scroll through the other uh, images. That would allow for a wider left side and allow for a more prototypical layout of what they're doing. Again, you have to test to know what works, but that would be one of the tests that I would run right away to see. This is very artistic, but if one converts better, I mean, that should be the end goal, right? Because we're looking for conversions here. Okay, on the right side, the, the text and information side, okay, doing a lot of things right. Okay, one thing that's not prototypical, again, is the center alignment here, which they can get away with. But the confusing part, which took me a minute to figure out the last time I was here, was this light gray text and the style number. Um, I was like, okay, which one is it? Because it's hard to see what's selected. But I found out that when you do select a different one, that's where it shows the color and the style. Um, to me, I, it's, it's just not where it should show up, not prototypical. It'd be better to have it show up off to the side of the color swatch here or somewhere or more prominently where it's more visible that they know, okay, I selected this coffee color. Cool, that's what I got, things like that. The other thing is reviews. Reviews need to be Amazon style, okay? They could get away with it. I know they're doing their black color scheme and everything, but if they made them look Amazon colored, and follow the Amazon format with a numeric format of 4.9 or 4.8 or whatever along with the stars, we're trained as consumers to trust Amazon style reviews and it works. It's one of the few things that if you directly copy from Amazon, it works really well. Why? 53 cents or more of every dollar that is spent online is spent on Amazon. We are socially conditioned as online shoppers to trust the Amazon style review layout. So that provides, when you use it on your own store, it provides inherent trust, the eyeball knows what they're seeing, it's a comfort factor subconsciously, and it makes the shopping experience better for the consumer, okay? So a great thing. They're also doing the um, Afterpay, which they could use Klarna or one of the other ones. These uh, payment plans are actually working really, really well. We're seeing about a 18 to 20% uptake in sales on products in the uh, 40 to $100 range, and then a significantly higher uptake on products over $100. So definitely worth testing in your market, even if you have a lower price product that you think people wouldn't be interested in doing payments on, okay? The next thing they're doing great is they're, they're using swatches instead of drop downs. So the swatches are these little squares to click the sizes and the colors. That's awesome. Uh, when you have uh, fewer than say five or six variants, swatches outperform drop downs and they're much easier to use on mobile devices and everything else. They convert significantly higher. Um, same thing as they're doing with the colors. Um, the, the one confusion point they have here is they have um, black gray and then black gray mid weight. Um, so this is a little bit thicker legging, I'm guessing, or maybe a little bit lighter legging. 
but having the two together without a, a clear de delineator as to what the difference is um, when you only see it up here, which they might miss. So someone could order the mid-weight thinking they were going to get the other one and not be happy with it. It just causes for confusion. And then add to bag should be add to cart. Okay, again, prototypical. There should be an arrow or a cart icon on there. Again, that sounds like I'm nitpicking, but these things make a difference. We saw almost a 21% lift in add to cart clicks by simply adding the arrow and the cart icon to the button. So it makes a big difference, okay? Bad, these share icons should not be here. You already paid to get them to your site. The last thing you wanna do is send them back to Facebook or Instagram where you just got them from. Share, social sharing stuff can be in the footer if you want it, but it should really never be on a product page, okay? Um, the shipping and return policy over here, um, they're already using these drop-down collapsible accordion style menus. They should just have a shipping and return policy um, drop down here because it kind of gets lost over here, but it's something that people care about, so it'd be better to have it down in the details, okay? Something else they're doing exceptionally well. Obviously, their photography is great. They're really showing off the leggings in a really good way. Uh, they're awesome. awesome. And they're giving the models statistics or stats, right? The specifications, like what, what their size, their bust, their, their legs, all that stuff. Because that's one of the things that I, I didn't realize, but my wife looks at, she always wants to know what the model size is, what the model looks like when she's buying clothes, Lululemon or whatever else, because it helps her figure out her size. So the fact that they're doing this is, a, is awesome. Um, so this, these accordion style drop downs with the details already expanded. This is great. So it, it compartmentalizes information, allows you to present a lot of information, but without overwhelming the customer and only showing it to them when they want it. The bad is that it's light gray text on a white background. It's hard to read. It should be very prominent and the font size is too small. Um, it's also um, in a bulleted format without bullets. So it's like um, breathable mesh ventilation, no muffin top, plenty of stretch. So each one is its own complete piece, but there's no period or bullet or any kind of uh, delineation of, is it a run-on sentence, is it individual points, whatever, it could be uh, presented a little bit better. The about talks about the, 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 qual the uh, actual leggings and what's so special about them, which is cool. Again, it needs to be easier to read. Fabrics, awesome, people care about this. They wanna know how they take care of it, what it comes in, what, what's the comp, the, is it how much cotton, how much polyester, spandex, all rayon, or whatever, stuff like that, super important. I would honestly say that the fabrics might be more important than the about, but, you know, again, test, but the fact that it's still there and it's so clickable, it's probably not as big of a deal to have one over the other. The sizing, it's got this uh, true to size fit, where if it runs tight to large or whatever, it says it's true to size. They say it's true to size here, but if you scroll down, um, you can see people are, can actually tell them how it wears, and some people say it runs true to size and some people don't. But if we come back up here for a second, they also have a order bump or an upsell functionality where they're basically pairing it with what it fits with, okay? Now, this is good. The problem with this, and again, this, this is where we have to get into the data because sometimes outliers happen. Whenever you have a product page upsell, you ideally don't want to have anything that they have to consider, okay? Now, a, a sports bra is something that a woman is gonna need to consider, see more details on, whatever, before she makes up her mind, okay? So it's not gonna be something that is a quick add to cart item, upsell item, it's not a no-brainer. It takes consideration. So let's see if this actually takes me to it. Okay, that's good. So at least if I click on it, it takes me to it. The bad thing is, is when I click on it without an right-clicking, it actually takes me off the page of the product that I was already considering buying. So this causes a disconnect because I was just back here getting ready to buy these leggings. I was already almost ready to click the add to cart button and then I got distracted. Ooh, squirrel, right? Oh, look, sports bra. Now I have to learn and read about all these sports bras and then I'm gonna be like, hmm, I wonder what other sports bras they have. Maybe I should go check those out and pretty soon I've forgotten about the leggings that I was just trying to check out on. That's the problem with upsells if not done correctly. You don't want to cause a distraction you want the upsell to be a no-brainer that doesn't distract from the original sale. Because again, the most important thing that we do is get the sale, okay? Not necessarily um, try, to, try to maximize AOV if we're going to potentially lose the sale. Get the sale, we can always get them to buy more later, okay? 
but it's still good that they're doing it. I'd love to see the test data and see across, you know, what it's actually doing and seeing where where it's helping and where it's hurting. Because every time you add an upsell to a page, yes, AOV typically does go up, but typically there's other metrics that you're not paying attention to that actually get hurt. Um, so you need to make sure that the AOV increase is bigger than the offset caused by the um, other metrics that get damaged, like add to cart, can initiate checkout, proceed to checkout, things like that. They're using a good review function here. Um, it could be better though, because there's, again, there's no, the star ratings, they are using the numeric piece here, uh, but there is no uh, keyword cluster based on what people are already using. There's no searchable review function and uh, a couple other things, like the things, again, that you're used to seeing on Amazon when it comes to reviews. So great they're using reviews and they're using the, the sizing piece where they can say true to size or whatever but it could be better because again, people, there's a lot of reviews here. There's 61 reviews showing here, um, but there's also only two reviews showing up top. So is this a cumulative list of reviews? It's gonna be kind of a confusing. I see two up top, but 61 at the bottom. What's up? That causes a disconnect. But again, if there were 61 reviews, I'd still wanna be able to search them. I don't wanna have to scroll through them. I wanna be able to filter them. I wanna be able to look at the three star, the one star, the low star reviews because as a consumer on Amazon, right? We always look at the low star reviews to see what happens and does the, does the, does the vendor fix the issue? So the, the, they're like Yapo, Judge Me, um, Look, all those different uh, Shopify apps work great for um, stamped. They, all, they were, all work great for reviews and they all have those functionalities. Um, this one's just missing a few of the ones that they could do to make it even better. All right, let's go ahead and add to cart though. Okay, we add to cart here. What? Oh, okay. So they have a pre-checked box that says, I have read and agreed to the shipping and international customs tax information. Okay. But I haven't read it. So how are you pre-checking the box? Well, you're pre-checking it because if it's not checked, I can't check out and you want me to check out. But you're pre-checking it even though I haven't read it. So there's a bit of a, a, a lie going on there and a legality issue because... I didn't check it, but you're telling me that I've that I've read it by checking it for me. And then I'm gonna have a problem, I'm gonna to come to you and you're gonna say, oh, well you checked the checkbox, so we can't really do anything because you had a chance to read it. Well, you already checked it for me before I even read it, okay? That's not good. The other thing is, is there is no reason for that to be there. They're making a business problem the customer's problem, okay, which is never a good thing. And I guarantee you this is hurting their add to cart rate and they're proceed to checkout. So let's just click it and see. Oh, it pulls a pop-up. A whole new page comes up with a whole bunch of information. All right. Again, this could be compartmentalized on a tab within the page if they need to, but this is a terrible, terrible idea. First of all, the fact that it's, if you have to do it and you really need it because of a legality issue, pre-checking it is basically already devaluing the legality because you're, you're basically defrauding the customer. That's not cool, right? Uh, but it really doesn't need to be there, okay? I don't know any other stores that we've ever worked on, big stores that we've consulted with or anything that have to have that on the cart. Um, there's, there's, there's other ways that this can be handled, okay? So it should not be there. Also, they're not checking out right now. They're proceeding to checkout. They're not, this is not a checkout. They have to go to the checkout. So this button should say proceed to checkout. Again, needs to be prototypical with what they're expecting. Now let's check the side slide cart real quick. Okay, so it does update and it does update the price, which is good. Okay, now let's go proceed to checkout. All right, now that we're in the checkout, it's basically a stock checkout, which means, and I know I'm sure this, this store is on Shopify Plus because it's plenty big, which means they have an unlocked checkout and the ability to optimize it and they have not done so. Um, Things like the bombshell logo. Perfect that it's on the left, but to the right of it should be customer service information, phone number, call us if you have questions as a social proof and trust element. The express checkout, Google Pay, Amazon Pay, PayPal. Again, they need to look at their data, but I would venture to say that probably less than one or 2% of their entire purchasers use Google Pay or Amazon Pay. Hardly any do, okay? I would venture to say that one of those three has probably never even had a purchase because that's how it is on most of the other stores. Google Pay and Amazon Pay just aren't utilized heavily. PayPal, although, 
can make up to 30% of your sales, so it's definitely worth doing. However, we typically like to suppress those buttons until the payment page, okay? The payment information page, which comes after shipping. Because again, if they click the PayPal button, they're taken off the Shopify checkout, and we have no option to capture their data and email retarget or email follow up with them for cart abandonment or anything else. So you wanna capture the information first so that if they abandon, you have more opportunities to follow up and save the sale. The PayPal button can show up on the payment information where they can select either PayPal or, or credit card. All right. A lot of stuff that this checkout is not, it's pretty basic. Um, it sh really should be optimized because this is the money page. Um, they, they aren't suppressing any fields. The gift card field should be hidden behind a link. Same thing with the apartment or second addr address line should be hidden behind a link and only expanded if they click on it. And then this, this section right here should be used for social proof, trust, confidence to get the person to buy. Instead, they're using it to put out warnings. This stuff should all be handled before they get to the checkout if there's an issue, okay? Talking to them about high order volume that we can't edit the order once it's, once it's been placed, okay? And then, hey, if you're outside the USA, make sure you select your, your, your country on the main page. Again, these are business problems. You're making the customer's problems. These objections, which aren't even objections, they're your objections, the vendor's objections, should be handled outside of the checkout, and that sp space should be utilized as social proof, uh, unique value propositions, and trust, okay? And that could really increase the amount of uh, checkouts that are happening because this page will be that much more trustworthy and, and uh, usable. All right, underneath the continue to, sh to shipping, you could also have your payment icons here. That's a good place to put those kind of trust symbols. And uh, okay, guys, so all in all, uh, oh, Bombshell's doing a lot of stuff right. And obviously it's working because it's working for my wife and she's spending a lot of money here. I see the, the credit card statements. Made me come check out the site. And like I said, guys, if you watch part one, you know they're doing a lot of stuff wrong, or it's a lot of stuff right. There's a few things they can be doing better. And actually there's a lot of stuff if we actually got into the data that we could be testing to make them do really, really well. But easily there's enough stuff on here that they could pretty much double potentially even triple their sales volume if they got the things dialed in 100%, right? Now, how does that affect you? Everything that I'm talking about on this store is directly applicable to you and your store as well. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. All of these things I'm talking about are principle-based and best practices that can be utilized on your store. So don't look at this site and go, oh, I don't sell leggings, so I can't use what he's talking about. Nothing I said was specific to leggings, okay? Doesn't matter what the product is. Everything I'm talking about can be leveraged on your store. So if you liked this video and you want to learn more about how to optimize and dial in your store, watch these two videos right here. And then also click the link below to subscribe and the little bell icon to make sure you get notified when we release new content. See ya.